Hi everybody, we're back. Today we're going to start our lesson on power. So, just like power from in physics before, power is equal to work per unit time. And the units of this are joules per second. Now, you can also write that one joule per second is equal to one watt. So, we write that like that. So, a watt is a joule per second. Now, when we have power flowing through a circuit, let's say our current is traveling in this direction, then this side would be our high voltage side and this side would be our low voltage side. We have a voltage drop across this resistor of V. And the current traveling through it is I. And the power dissipated through this circuit or this resistor is equal to I times V. Now if we multiply current times voltage, this equation here is the general form of the power equation. But we can actually create two different versions of it. If we apply Ohm's law and we assume or not assume, but state that voltage equals IR. If we substitute this into this equation for V, we'll get P equals I times, instead of writing V now, we'll write I times R. And this now provides us with a second equation for power, which is I squared R. This equation is often used to calculate dissipated power in transmission lines because it's current squared multiplied by resistance. So here we'll put a box around this one. This is the second version of our power equation. Now if we apply Ohm's law again in a different way where we say I equals V divided by R. And then if we say power equals, now instead of writing I here, we'll write V divided by R, which represents the I, multiplied by R from here. Then we will get power is equal to Wait, I made a mistake. That's wrong. Let me back up here. It's not multiplied by R. It's multiplied by V. So now <coughs> what I get for the power, that's just equal to V squared over R. So here is my other e or my second equation for power. So I have three equations for power, and all of them are correct. But let's go back and discuss the units for power. So let's start with this one here. Power is equal to, now if we remember, it's, we'll just write the equation down again. But I want to write the units down. So this is a watt, which is a joule per second. I is 
amps and V is volts. So let's also, you know, write that down. Amps and volts. So what's an amp volt? Well, in order to understand this, we now need to understand what current is. Okay? So what is current? I. So the, the units of current is amps, but what's an amp? An ampere is equal to one ampere is equal to one coulomb per second. Now what's a coulomb? A coulomb is a unit of charge. So that means current is charge per unit time. That's what a current is. It's the amount of charge that passes per unit time. The question now is, how much is one coulomb? Of charge. Well, the best way that I can explain this is, is let's go back to the definition of the smallest indivisible quantum unit of charge. Smallest quantum. Quantum means uh, indivisible. Or the, you, you can't make it any smaller. Charge. And that is one electron. So one electron is equal to 1.602 times 10 to the power of negative 19 coulombs. And the C stands for coulombs. Now, if that's the amount of charge on the smallest amount of charge that you can have, then how many, we could, oops, let me move that. We could say how much charge, or I should say not how much, but rather how many, how many electrons are required to make one coulomb? And the answer is, if you take this number, 1.602 times 10 to the power of negative 19, that's, that's the charge on one electron per electron. So if you want electrons per coulomb, all you got to do is reciprocate this number. So it's just 1 over 1 1.602 times 10 to the power of negative 19, which is equal to, so you get 6.24 times 10 to the power of 18 electrons per coulomb. Now, that's a lot. Um, I think if we were to state it in terms of like a number that we could read out, I think it'd be 6.24 quintillion. I think that's the way you write that. So there's, so uh, just as a side note, there's 10 to the power of 9 is billion, 10 to the power of 12 is trillion, 10 to the power of 15 is quadrillion, 
and therefore 10 to the power of 18 is quintillion. So that's, that's a lot of electrons. It's beyond my imagination. So um, we know now that therefore one amp of current is equal to one coulomb per second. Okay, so we are coming from here, right? One amp is equal to one coulomb per second, which is equal to 6.24 times 10 to the 18 electrons per second. Now, now that we know what an amp is, because we kind of came from here, now we know what, what the amp is. Next question is, what's the volt so let's move up a little bit here or actually perhaps maybe let's move this way and let's see if we can figure out what the volt is so a volt is energy or voltage I should say voltage is energy per unit charge. In other words, think of voltage as being the pressure of the current or of the charge. Now, a, a, a better way I think of thinking about this is, like I said, energy per unit charge. If there's more voltage, then the same amount of charge has more energy. So the units for energy per unit charge, well, energy is simply joules. per coulomb or joule per coulomb. One joule per coulomb is equal to one volt. So now if we go back to our measurement of power and say power equals current times voltage, then we can say in terms of the units we can say, well, current is one coulomb per second. And then we multiply that by voltage, which is a joule per coulomb. And you notice the coulombs cancel out and we get a joule per second, which is exactly what our original unit of power was. And we now know that one joule per second is one watt. So that means that's equal to a watt. So essentially, now we know that a volt, or sorry, I should start with. Uh, current, an amp volt, or a, a better way of pronouncing this, usually people, when you, when you write this equation, I, I like to write it P equals IV, because it just is a nice word called PIV, but you can also write it as P equals VI, it's the same equation, multiplication is commutative, it doesn't matter which order you multiply I and V. But essentially, but if you write it X this way, you can say it's a volt amp okay and a volt amp let's move this up a bit a volt amp therefore has units of a joule per second which is a watt so so if you see the unit VA for volt amps that's equal to a watt which is a joule per second now, let's stop there for a moment and um, I'm going to put a, uh, a link in this uh, description of a video that I'd like you to have a look at which kind of gives you a sense of 
how humans relate to work. It's actually a, uh, a cyclist who is uh, generating enough power to toast their bread. So you, perhaps maybe you could uh, go and have a look at that video. It's a really cool one. So let's go back to our unit of energy here, which is a kilowatt hour. And I know we may have done this before. Uh, a kilowatt hour. How much energy is a kilowatt hour? Well, one kilowatt is equal to 1,000 watts. Or another way of saying that is 1,000 joules per second. And what's one hour? Or in this case, just an H. One hour, how many seconds is that? Well, it's 60 minutes multiplied by 60 seconds per minute. 60 times, 6 times 6 is 36 plus 2 zeros and the, sec, and the minutes cancel out and we get 3,600 seconds. So now we could say that 1 kilowatt hour is equal to 1,000 watts times 3,000 that's a bad three. 3,600 seconds. And that's going to give us 1,000 times 3,600. That's 3.6 million. 3.6 times 10 to the power of 6. And the units for that is joules per second times seconds which gives me joules, or 3.6 megajoules. That's one kilowatt hour. OK? This is just for us to kind of know the conversion between one kilowatt hour and how many joules that translates into. But in any case, so this kind of relates to the, uh, the cycling video, because I think they said that for the for the cyclist, it was 0 0.021 uh, kilowatt hours. But we've now kind of demonstrated the concept of power and the units associated with it and the three different equations that we have for power. Um, I think that is a good place to stop.